According to the leader of the Democratic Republican Party, the agriculture industry is not being utilized to its fullest potential. In an interview with SVGTV, Anicia Batiste highlighted that St. Vincent's rich soil provides for a variety of produce to be grown, both for local consumption and exports. Not just growing the traditional foods that we're used to, but exploring other foods that we can grow that can catch good prices on the markets. I find we're too limited in our range in terms of what we grow and also what we do with what we grow because we don't only have the opportunity to export raw material, we also have the opportunity to develop technologies with respect to those raw material, add value and create products. The DRP leader went on to say that agricultural growth required proper management of the agriculture industry so as to create more income and job opportunities in the country. Of these cosmetic products made use of things like coconut, which we have so much here, as well as charcoal, you know, and people are spending big money for on their faces and on their skin with products that use raw material that we grow here in abundance and that we could provide. And so I would love to see us pursue a lot of those technologies and develop products that can catch good money on the market so we can make money, we can put people to work, and we can become, as it were, the creators and the inventors, as it were, of our own unique produce. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez made the call for a deeper partnership between the local private sector and the government. While speaking on the radio program Ask the Prime Minister, Dr. Gonzalez noted that there is still land available in the state that can be developed with private sector and government collaboration. About 100 acres of land, for instance, beachfront land, beautiful land in, in Chatham Bay, Union Island. We have a few hundred acres of land at Spring and neighboring area in, in, in um, Beckway, uh, up in um, industry really, mm -hmm. and, and um, about 60 something acres down at, at um, St. Hilary Point. So there is the, 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 these lands which we can look towards for development. I, I want to say really that I'm hoping that the private sector Vincentian private sector would look to partner with the government and I, I wouldn't want to hear the complaints afterwards if persons from overseas are coming when they of course we welcome foreign direct investment but I'd like to see um, a number of more Vincentians to come in to create wealth and also create jobs. Persons are being advised to return to Bible-based principles for 2015 by Apostle Samuel Young of the Triumphant Covenant Church. Young says that only God, that only God is the solution to all the conflicts and, and ailments of mankind. So, I really strongly believe society on a whole, when we trace the history of human civilization, growth, development, we can see strongly creation and civilization start from a God factor rich with God's element, suitable for every form of life on the earth. God desires us to return to that. It has to do with the renewing of the mind. And if we will retain God in our knowledge, and if we will seek after Him, establish our um, values, beliefs, and structure society home, upon the very fabric of the, the word of God which become, you know, the elements, we are going to realize the society that we dream about. He further stated that while there is a root to every problem that afflicts this country, there is only one solution. So do you find there are many religious bodies? There is only one church of, 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 uh, one church of Jesus Christ in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's always a root to a thing. One can treat the fruit, and we know if you treat the fruit, you can pick them all off. Mm -hmm. But the next season of springtime and harvest time, they're going to come all the way back. But if you can get to the root of a problem, and you can deal with the root. If you affect the root, you affect the tree and the fruit mm -hmm. for life. And so I would advise my nation 
and even those that are viewing our answer to the challenges that we face within the family church and by wider um, dimension and expansion of our society locally to globally is that man has to return to his roots everything else were created with a purpose the mystery continues as to what really occurred on january 3rd when the altar at the church of the ascension at Sion hill was discovered to be ablaze according to the dean of the saint george's cathedral the reverend patrick mcintosh the janitor arrived at the church at around 7 15 a.m to carry out his usual chores only to find the altar on fire reverend mcintosh says that police are still investigating the cause and it appeared that the, perp the perpetrator may have entered the cathedral through a side window. The man of the cloth explained that although only the altar was desecrated when the news of the fire spread throughout the community, it devastated many in the Anglican faith since the church was struck by a previous fire in the 1990s. The clergyman said that the congregation did not let the incident deter them from carrying out their service that day as they creatively came up with a substitute altar to have mass. Reverend McIntosh expounded that the incident still has many scratching their heads in wonderment. Um, I, I don't want to say it's to the person who is mentally ill, and neither do I want to say um, that it's a deliberate act, um, but that um, some knowledge of taking the altar cloth from one side to the other side, whatever the, the intention or the mind of the person, is that um, the fire then occurred by the falling of bringing together all the cloth on the right hand side facing the altar and um, and then sort of ignited and and burned uh, only had strength enough uh, to, do, to burn a little part of the that, that part of the altar um, because then when we got there it was still smoking when there was the fire the Reverend, however, said although the fire was unfortunate, he has advised his congregation to interpret the fire as the need for them to be witnesses of the gospel who do not let their lights for Jesus go out. It says that um, our work of mission, perhaps we have lapses somewhere because we have not really gone out to, to be the light to the nation. And that is what we've been called to do in God's mission in, our, in that incorporation when we were incorporated in the mystical body of Christ in baptism that we were the very old symbol but very rich in its message um, and its symbolism and that um, you are the light of the world you're no longer a child of darkness go take this light and light the rest of the world that is to let them see it so that they may come to glorify the Father who is in heaven and I think that is uh, perhaps uh, something that um, we need to come around and uh, again reenact our life in Christ, that we are who we are. The New Democratic Party has condemned the actions of Nigel Stevenson, who has admitted to driving an unlicensed vehicle since 2009. In a release issued by the leader of the opposition, Arnim Eustace, today, it read, having been elected by the people of South Leeward to the House of Representatives, Stevenson should rightfully be held to a higher standard of accountability by the party and his country. He further added that he has instructed Stevenson to not only immediately settle all outstanding vehicle registration fees owed to the licensing authority, but also insure the vehicle and rectify its legal ownership. Stevenson is to appear before the Disciplinary Committee of the New Democratic Party on Tuesday, January 20th. The, state, the release states that Nigel Stevenson entered into an agreement with Mr. Bernard Pernat for the purchase of a Suzuki Escudo Jeep bearing the license number PS759 in July of 2009. Stevenson accepted delivery of the vehicle and has been paying for it by inst in installments. At the time of the arrangement, the vehicle carried a 2009 registration sticker, which expired in September 2010. Stevenson continued to operate the vehicle in an unlicensed and uninsured state for the ensuing five years. President of the SVG Human Rights Association, Nicole Sylvester, is concerned that the dejected state of the economy is causing stress and impacting the lives and mental state of many. In an interview with SVG TV, 
The barrister at law described these times as difficult and outlined that businesses have complained of poor performance. She said that poor yield in the business sector eventually affects the payment of workers and the, eco and the overall economic growth. And then not that many of the business houses that have said that this has been a bumper season and normally you know at Christmas it's really exceedingly good they've had a boost in sales but not certainly as it has been over the years there are a few exceptions of course but certainly um, there are those who have said that they did not even bring in the level of goods because they did not want to be left with stock so, so, so we have to understand uh, that there is a difficulty in our economic growth. Sylvester pointed out that many employers are finding it difficult to maintain their levels of staff and she called on workers to be diligent and productive. You cannot separate financial, financial stress, financial hardship in terms of what what it does mentally for individuals and there are individuals who are definitely their houses are being advertised for sale individuals their jobs are in jeopardy because their employers cannot afford to employ the number of staff that they do these are the harsh realities and it is incumbent on those who are employed to treat your job with the utmost care now is not a time to actually be critical of those who employ you because you are likely to lose your job. You are likely to lose your job when decisions are being made. Now is the time to actually see how you can, what you can do to ensure that there's sustainability in, in, in terms of the job market. 20-year-old Quincy Boyd, a laborer from the Otley Hall community, will be a guest at Her Majesty's prisons for the next four years after he was found guilty by Chief Magistrate Rayshawn Brown Mathias on three separate charges. Police caught Boyd with an unlicensed Magnum revolver, three rounds of ammunition, and a quantity of drugs. And Jason Henry and Randy Roberts, both of residents of Lomans Hill, walked out of the serious offenses court this morning free men on a joint charge of murder. That should be on the joint charge of the May 6, 2014 murder of Kyle Phillips. Chief Prosecutor Adolphus Delplash withdrew the charges based on evidence that was presented by the mother of the deceased during the preliminary inquiry. During her testimony, Phillips' mother said that she could not properly identify the men, having only seen the left side of their faces. Phillips, who was gunned down near his home, subsequently succumbed to his wounds.